more on that. We're joined by Tony Badran, a research fellow at the Foundation for the Defence of Democracy. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so, so first of all, how significant do you find those comments by Joe Brown Basile? Is the Christian alliance with Hezbollah coming apart? Uh, first, thank you for having me. No, the, the comments are not significant at all, and uh, the alliance is not coming apart. Uh, if you look closely at the substance of the of Gibran Basile's gripe, it is actually not specifically with Hezbollah, but with Hezbollah's ally, the Amal movement, headed by the Speaker of Parliament, Nabih Berri. Uh, and these two uh, allies of Hezbollah, meaning Basile's Maronite movement and Amal, had been at loggerheads for a long time. And so uh, what Gibran Basile was doing, actually, is not breaking away from Hezbollah. Rather, he was appealing to Hezbollah as the master of the house uh, to intervene on his side in this dispute. So it is really merely an acknowledgement of Hezbollah's total dominance of the Lebanese political order. So, so what, to what extent is this linked uh, to Hezbollah's efforts to frustrate the investigation into the Beirut bomb blast? It does uh, have a, a, a link to it because some of the people that, the figures that were being subpoenaed to, to be uh, by, by the investigative judge were uh, uh, were tied to the uh, Amal movement directly. Uh, and they felt that they were being singled out and targeted uh, uh, exclusively, which, again, if you look at the specifics of uh, Gibran Basile's comments, he doesn't disagree with this uh, take on the investigation that somehow it had taken specific focus. And he proposes that this could be worked out with Hezbollah if only they would intervene on their behalf with 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 Amal uh, as well. Uh, so there, there, uh, it doesn't it doesn't affect Hezbollah directly. Nobody from Hezbollah directly has been uh, subpoenaed. These allies had been subpoenaed, which had created uh, an issue uh, from the Hezbollah camp. Uh, against what they believe to be a politicized investigation. So Lebanon will hold parliamentary elections in May and there'll be a presidential election in October. How do you see these new tensions playing out in the election? Well, this is another thing. Gibran Basil has aspirations to become president and he is uh, uh, in competition with yet another Hezbollah ally, only underscoring the totality of Hezbollah's domination of Lebanese politics. Uh, so he wants to, uh, and he wants to obviously uh, build up uh, some sort of a sectarian uh, 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 mobilization prior to the to the elections, uh, uh, should they even take place uh, on time, uh, and so by by so the balance that he struck is to at once appeal to Hezbollah while seeming to um, distinguish himself from Hezbollah uh, in in preparation for these uh, elections. However, the funny part about it is that without Hezbollah support. Uh, Basile's electoral uh, prospects, as with many of his uh, of Hezbollah allies, would become a lot poorer. That said, in terms of the overall uh, uh, balance of power in in the election, should they come, the ruling uh, oligarchs, uh, the sectarian oligarchs, are likely to to retain their positions of power as the so-called civil society alternatives that have that a lot of people in the West are excited about don't seem to even, uh, haven't even really fielded uh, uh, any any serious contenders. And we don't, I'm sure, certainly a lot of them are unknown to the Lebanese public uh, and they lack the muscle and the sectarian mobilization that the traditional parties have. Uh, in the end, we'll see also Ten. once uh, the, the uh, presidential term is over, who Hezbollah decides will be the next president. Tony Bajan at the FDD, thank you very much for your insight. Thank you.